Welcome to another inspirational message from Chowdean Community Church, Gateshead. For more information about Chowdean, visit www.chowdean.org.uk. We hope you enjoy the podcast. How are you all doing? You okay? Great, nice one. Uh, so for those of you who might not know, um, I'm sure plenty do, um, I'm the CEO of M10 Missions and uh, hi Vic, uh, Victoria, Amy, uh, Claire's not here, is she? Is Claire here? No. Um, and then Rachel, who was just up here, have all been involved in M10 Missions and they've been absolutely brilliant and it's growing, which is great. So the first thing that I want to say is thank you to this whole church for your support of M10 Missions over the, um, the years that we've been running. It's, uh, it's working. It's doing good. So uh, we covet your prayers. Uh, this year was the first year where we saw uh, 10 people, 10, 11 people um, make decisions to become Christians. Uh, we've never seen that before, uh, which is um, incredible. And, um, and so we're just really excited about how God is going to take <laughs> this, this whole movement forward, uh, so to speak. And um, some of those uh, young people who have come back have joined an Alpha course or are going along to Hillsong in Newcastle and um, getting, um, getting into what church is all about. So, so it's good. It, you know, it's good. What you've done for us is good. And I want you to hear it right from the horse's mouth. You're good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, if you've got a Bible, uh, I would love for you to turn to John chapter 3, please. It's Jesus' discourse or dialogue with um, Nicodemus. And good old Stephen forgot to bring his glasses. Oh, well. (laughs) Okay. Jesus teaches Nicodemus. Here we go. Now, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old, Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. Um, I want you to have a little discussion uh, for a few seconds with the person sitting next to you just to come up with a definition of what you feel uh, a Christian is. Okay, So it's nothing earth-shattering, just 30 seconds. What's a Christian? Go for it. Okay, Um, you look like you're kind of either talking about what you're having for lunch or... (laughs) Um, So, shout out some things to me. What's a Christian? Okay, great. Uh, What else? Anything, nothing is... Well, I don't think anything's going to be the wrong answer. Uh, Just go for it. Brilliant. Great. Yeah, knowing the Lord personally, having him in your heart, new creation. Yeah. 
Yep, so that's similar, believing in Jesus as the Son of God. Anything else? So actually doing something about it, telling other people about it. Okay, okay, good. Um, Can we have that first slide, please? Great. Does anybody know who this is? Hey, you know your people. Keith Green. Okay, so has anybody ever been to one of Keith Green's concerts in the past? At all? No? Okay. So this guy, an American guy, fantastic piano player, um, a prophet, you would say, um, really uh, radical in terms of uh, telling people what he believed uh, Jesus thought and felt about people. So he came out of the 60s um, revival revolution, if you like. Um, He was somebody who was heavily into sex, drugs, and rock and roll, and then God took hold of his life, dynamically changed his life, and he was used to dynamically change the lives of others. Um, So, um, next tap for me, please. Um, So that's who it is, Keith Green. Now, he's... uh, He was doing a concert one time, and he was uh, describing to the thousands of people that were there what his definition of a Christian is. Thanks. He said, I've got a really good definition of what a Christian is. Someone who is bananas for Jesus. Someone who loves the Lord their God with all their heart, all their soul, all their mind, and all their strength. And don't forget the last bit. Someone who loves their neighbor just like they love themselves. Would you agree with that? Okay. Um, Like I say, Keith Green was a real radical, and he would be really concerned with people who held the name Christian, but didn't live the life Christian. Now, I'm not coming in here on judgment on anybody because in that regard, I don't know anybody in this room, okay? So please do not feel any level of condemnation. Um, I'm not looking to give it. What I do believe is that God is looking for a people who are willing to go where he goes, do what he does, and say what he says. And in that regard, it's quite simple. To go where he goes, to do what he does, and to say what he says. God is looking for a people that won't say, Lord, Lord, because we know what happens to those people. Jesus says, depart from me, I never knew you. He's looking for a people who will say, yes, Lord, of which there is a huge difference. Lord, Lord, give me, I need, I need, I need, or look what I've done, to yes, Lord, I will go where you say, I will do what you say, I will say what you say. This is kind of adapting a little bit our definition of Christianity. Because what it's doing is it's compelling us to move into areas whereby we have to hear and listen to what God is saying, where we have to use our spiritual eyes and look to where God is moving and tap into that. So one of my questions that goes out to you and to me as well, and some, in some cases I like to sit on that chair and kind of listen to myself talk, is where, what circles are you moving in? Are you moving in circles where you can clearly see what God is doing and you're responding to that? Are you moving in circles where you can hear what God is saying and you can speak into that? Are you moving in circles where you can feel the heart of God for somebody else and you can bring the Spirit of God into that situation? Are you carrying the Spirit of God where you're going? See, because God is looking for a people who are prepared to do that. What does that look like today? On our M10 missions, part of the point, there's like three areas to to, uh, M10 missions. One area is that young people would broaden their horizons of world poverty and know that they can make a difference. 
Second is that they might be able to get something on their personal statement for uni or on their CV for future employment where they can, you know, like stand out from the crowd. And thirdly, that they will see an element of Jesus that they just wouldn't really see or be engaged in necessarily in this country. And this year, with no offense to anybody who who has been on our trips, it, it was just different, right? Um, this year, we saw some things that I have never seen in all my life of being a Christian. Day one, we, uh, a team was taken out to, um, uh, to, uh, to an orphanage. And um, when they were out at the orphanage, um, a few of them wanted to pray for the people there. They weren't Christians. They wanted to pray, but they didn't believe in God. They wanted to do something of a Christian nature, but they weren't Christian. That just blew my mind. I didn't get it. I didn't understand it. I was just like, what, eh? Hmm? And so they prayed. They stood in a circle and they prayed one by one. Each of them prayed. The leaders just let them do it. And then day after day after day, There would be situations like that. They would be asking loads and loads of questions. Why? Why was this happening? This was happening because they were in an environment where other people knew that the Spirit of God was moving and carried the Spirit of God, so to speak, into the situations they were in. See, things begin to change when we open ourselves up to the Spirit of God. Because it's less of our control and more of his. That's why God is looking for these people who will go where he goes, do what he does, and say what he says. That is his description, if you like, of what a Christian is. And when we look back at this, um, this story in Jesus teaching Nicodemus, Let's get, um, let's get a, a, a little bit of background. So Nicodemus, he's a member of the Jewish ruling council. So he's a Pharisee. It says it there that he's a Pharisee. The Jewish ruling council uh, was made up of Sadducees and Pharisees. Um, the joke about Sadducees was that they didn't believe in the resurrection. That's why they were sad, you see. Um, sorry, I'm sorry. You, you, you're going to tell somebody that this week. I know you are, so don't do that oh, at me. Okay. Um, and um, their job, part of their job, was to try and siphon out, suss out um, who's authentic and who's not. Because there were a lot of people coming and saying that they were the Messiah. So they wanted to work out, well, is this person who he really says he is? So Nicodemus comes to Jesus at night and says, hey, Jesus, you know, hi, I'm Nicodemus. I know that you're, uh, you know, you must be from God because you do all these things and nobody could do these things unless they were from God. Um, And then Jesus kind of cuts the chase. (laughs) No one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. In other words, you cannot understand anything about me unless there's a transformation that has gone on in your life. So don't come at me telling me who I am and where I'm from and all of that kind of... No, it's about you, son. The judgment's on you today. And... The kingdom of God, what's the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is the rule and reign of God. Again, God is looking for people who will come under his rule and reign, who will live within the context of his kingdom, his rule and reign. Born again, what's that all about? That's about a real transformation from the inside out. It's about something different happening. So they're having this dialogue between each other. I don't get it. How can somebody be born twice when they're old? doesn't make sense, Jesus. You shouldn't be confused at my saying you must be born again. You're Israel's teacher. Come on, you should know these things. This is basic. Do you ever feel like there's a sense that you've been in church for ages and there's still stuff you don't know, don't, don't, don't get? I, I do. 
I just think, mm, I think I should have known that. <laughs> I think I should have understood that, really. And then he comes to this really, really weird part. Next slide, please. Where Jesus says, look, the wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound. You do not know where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. Bang. Okay, let's get a grasp on this, the wind. So the Greek word for wind is? That's right, pneuma. And that's talking about (laughs) the powerful move of the Spirit. Okay, so Acts 2, violent, what what was like a violent sound, powerful move. (sighs) People were filled with the Spirit. Okay, so basically Jesus is saying that The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sounds. You cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everybody born of the Spirit. A Christian person is a person who is born of the Spirit. So what Jesus is saying is, is that this is his definition of what a Christian is. It's not what a Christian should be. It's what a Christian is. Can we see that difference between the two? And so straight away what this does to me is it puts a challenge out to me because when I look at my life, I think, "Mm, is the Holy Spirit acting in my life in that particular kind of way? And if he is, great. If he is not, why not? Why do I call myself a Christian? The truth probably is, is that from time to time he is. And from time to time, I'm taking control. Let's break it down a bit. Next one. Okay, the wind blows wherever it pleases. It's uncontrollable. Hurricane Irma. Do you remember that? August uh, 13th to September the 17th, something like that. Caught, wreaked havoc and absolute devastation throughout eastern parts of the U.S., throughout the Caribbean, It absolutely went to town in parts of South America, Puerto Rico. Question, is the work of the Spirit like that in our lives, uncontrollable? That's what Jesus is saying that a Christian characteristic is like. It's not out of control. It's just the opportunity to be able to do whatever, whenever, wherever. It's a step up in our understanding of what faith is, of what being a Christian is. Oh, yeah, God, you're saying this? Yeah, I'll go and speak to this person. Oh, God, you're going here? Yeah, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go and do that. You want me to say this? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll say that. But what, what probably happens is we have like a filter, and it's like, a filter of, yeah, that's okay. Mm, that will take a little bit of faith. No chance. And what God wants rid of is that filter altogether. <laughs> because that means his Holy Spirit can be uncontrollable in our lives. Next uh, tap, please. Undeniable. You can hear its sound. Is it clear clarion crystal clear that the work of the Holy Spirit is active in your life. What are you talking about from day to day? How often does the name of Jesus or how often do spiritual matters flow from our tongues? Is it clear to your work colleagues? Is it clear to your family? Is it clear to your children? Is it undeniable that the Holy Spirit is active in your life? I mean, obviously, your workmates aren't going to come up to you and say, wow, I can really see the work of the Spirit in your life. That's not going to happen. I mean, that'd be amazing, right? But that's not going to happen. But you've heard this before, haven't you? There's something about you. I don't know what it is, but you're different. There's something about you, and I want what you've got. 
That's the undeniable work of the Holy Spirit in your life. It just flows out. Next tap, please. Unpredictable. Sometimes the difficulty with the church is that we're so predictable. People know what's going to happen next. They know what we're going to do next. They know that we're going to complain about something. They know that we're going to, you, you know, a, a story is going to come out about a priest who has done this with a child or, or, or what. You're really predictable. But we're predictable for the wrong things. <laughs> The work of the Holy Spirit. Can God get access to our lives in a way whereby, oh, didn't expect that to happen. Didn't see that coming. Really? See, when Jesus was here on earth, they couldn't pin him down. They just did not know what was going to happen next. The Pharisees tried to get control of him, and they couldn't. Because they just, you know, they're kind of, right, we'll have you on, you know, that, kind of, that blind person and you blaspheme. And then all of a sudden he's raising somebody from the dead. And then all of a sudden he's, you know, like healing the sick. And then all of a sudden he's like taking fish out, a coin out of a fish. And then all the, you, you, you can, it's because the work of the Spirit was uncontrollable, undeniable, and unpredictable in his life. Forgot the unexplainable. The unexplainable. Is it clear? Like, do you fully understand everything about what God's doing in your life? Do you get it all? There you go then. The work of the Spirit in your life. See, when we're at that point where we get everything, we understand everything, we control everything, there's a problem because the Holy Spirit is not uncontrollable in our lives. Does that make sense? So, what's helpful is to look at another degree of this. So, if you turn to Acts chapter 2, very, 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 very famous chapter. I'm not going to read all of it. Um, uh, Next slide, please. And then the next slide. That's great. Okay, so, we're kind of going to bomb through this a little bit. When I've sorted myself out. Okay, so Acts 2. Um, the story, for those who might not know, I'm pretty sure most people do, but the disciples are told to wait in a room. They wait in a room. They wait for the Spirit to come. The Spirit comes, and all of a sudden, violent wind. <laughs> Everything kind of goes crazy, and then all of a sudden, people start understanding people in their own languages. And I was like, whoa. And they're kind of like acting almost as though they're drunk and some people think they are drunk. Um, And then Peter gets up and he kind of addresses the crowd. And then it gets really exciting after that because then persecution comes. Okay, so the uncontrollable. Where do we see the uncontrollable? So uh, first one. Oh, yeah, that. Well done. Uh, So the first one, verse 4. So as the Spirit enabled them... Note to self, bring your glasses, definitely, next time. Here we go. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. So clearly, the Holy Spirit has got control of them at that particular point. And it's all good. So there's the uncontrollable. Next one, undeniable. Where do we see the undeniable work of the Holy Spirit amongst them? Still in verse 3 to verse 4, they saw what happened. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. See, it happened amongst the they and the them. So it was clear that it was the Holy Spirit. It was clear to, to everybody that something was happening. It was definitely evident. Would you agree with that? Yeah, okay, let's move on to the next one. Unexplainable, verse 6. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, are not all these men who are speaking Galileans, etc., etc. So they couldn't get to grips with what was going on. They were in bewilderment. They were in bewilderment and they were absolutely amazed. 
people should be in bewilderment and amaze when they see the work of God in our lives. Because God is supernatural. He is not natural. It's not that God does the bewildering all the time, but there should be room for him to do the bewildering and the utterly amazing. Next uh, tap, please. Unpredictable, verse 14 and verse 41. Verse 14 says, Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd, etc., etc. Verse 41 says... Where have you gone? There you are. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Completely unpredictable. Nobody saw that coming. Isn't it interesting that all of this starts with giving over control to the Holy Spirit? When you give over control to the Holy Spirit, the unpredictable happens. Do we wonder why we don't see the utterly amazing and bewildering things of God? Maybe it's because we haven't given the control to the Holy Spirit to do the uncontrollable in our lives. There's got to be more than this. There has to be. There's too much suffering in our world. There's too much pain. There's too much injustice. There's too much wrong. There's too much deceit. There's got to be more than this. And if we can't sort it out, flesh gives birth to flesh. Remember, the flesh counts for nothing. Well, it's the Spirit that gives life. So let's rely on God's Holy Spirit to do the uncontrollable work so that we can see the unpredictable happen. Another... um, Trademark of those born of the Spirit. Please turn to Acts chapter 16. This is Paul and Silas in prison. The uncontrollable work, verse uh, 25. So they have, um, to give a little bit of background, so Paul and Silas are uh, on their way, you know, going for a walk. And there's this woman behind them who's, you know, kind of um, imitating what they're doing. And Paul kind of loses his rag a bit and just kind of turns around to them and just says to her, look, in the name of Jesus, you stop that now. Come out of her. Demon, come out of her. So demon comes out, and then all of a sudden they find out that this woman is actually owned by some other people And they are losing money because she can no longer do what she was doing. So then they start to turn on Paul and Silas. And the people turn on Paul and Silas as well. And then they get beaten and they get flogged. And they get beaten and then they get flogged. And then they get thrown in jail. So they're in jail. And then they start to cry and wail and moan and complain and say, God, why have you done? No, they don't. What does it say? They prayed and they sang hymns to God. I've got to tell you, if somebody even <laughs> slapped my face, I would not <laughs> be praising and singing hymns to God. I, 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 sorry, I, I just wouldn't. I'd like to think I would. But this was their response. Why? Because... The joy of the Lord became their strength. There was something welled up within them that made them feel, do you know, even in spite of this, I still want to be open to God's Holy Spirit moving in my life. And do you know what? I'm going to sing to him and I'm going to praise him and I'm going to lift up my voice to him. Awesome. That's the uncontrollable work of the Spirit in their lives. Undeniable. So verse 25 as well, other prisoners were listening to to what they were singing. So it was clear that this was something different going on. Unexplainable. Verse 26, there was a violent earthquake. Chains were broken loose and they were no longer slaves. How did you become a Christian? Your chains were broken loose and you were no longer a slave to sin. You would become a servant of Christ. It's quite straightforward, isn't it? This is the evident work of God once we give control over to him. It's incredible what happens. 
They couldn't explain. The jailer couldn't explain, understand how this all happened. But then the unpredictable happens. And verse 30 to 33, the jailer and household hear the words of the Lord and salvation comes. Nobody saw that coming. When Peter, when Porter, Paul and Silas were in prison, thrown into prison, they did not see that coming. The jailer did not see that him and all his household would suddenly start believing in Jesus. They did not see it coming. I feel like we're, 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 we're all in agreement here. We're all in understanding here. But what I want to do is I want to take us from understanding to actual movement. And this is where it comes. Can I come down here? Well, I am anyway. Okay, cool. Okay, so when Jesus is delivering the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, he says this, and this is what I want to speak to all of you as a church. He says this, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under its stand. Instead, and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand so that it can be seen by everyone. Here it comes. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and do what? Praise your Father in heaven. When you give God control, as, sorry, as we give God control, we see God do the undeniable, unexplainable, unpredictable. And then what happens is people look heavenwards and praise him. So one of the girls that um, became a Christian this year, it's always hard to know when they come back, will it carry on? So we went 2nd of August to the 12th of August. And um, I think I'd seen her once or twice. And then she had arranged for us to deliver a parent presentation evening at the... Um, at her dad's uh, workplace. And um, when me and my wife arrived, blasting out was Christian music. I'm just like, what? And as people arrived, still the Christian music being played. And then when people left, still the Christian music being played. Now, that is not big, massive evidence that a person has become a Christian. But do you know what it is? It is her giving over control to the work of the Spirit in her life. And it will be a journey for her, and it will take a while, but it started, and she's doing something about it. I did not see that coming. And it was awesome to see. And for the next week, I was still talking to my wife about that situation. It's amazing. Amazing. What can you do that gives God that next little bit of control? What can you say? Is God asking you to go somewhere? Is God asking you to be something to someone? Even this afternoon, that bit of control and the, the unpredictable thing might just lead to somebody finding Christ for the first time. How awesome. Okay, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to pray. I'm going to ask you to stand. And then I'm going to ask that we respond to this. And the way I'd love us to respond is quite simple. It's literally by taking a step forward. And what that step forward signifies is 
God, I want you to take that bit more control in my life. It's the easiest thing in the world to do today. But the outworking of that might just ask of you something out of your comfort zone. But we do not do these things in the flesh on our own. We do these things by the Spirit. Because it's the Spirit that gives life. Let's stand. Okay, so I'll pray. Father, thank you that you want to work in our lives. Thank you that you want to see this nation changed. Thank you for this church that has uh, a local and global reach, Lord. Thank you that there are many people in here who are already giving you full control on their lives. And I pray, God, that they would look to take that next step. For those who, in a sense maybe, haven't got a clue what I've been on about this morning, Lord, I pray that you would open their minds on something that has been said so that they can walk in an understanding of you. And as this congregation decide today, either together or individually, whether they're going to take that step of faith, allowing you control over what you have control of anyway, because you are God. I pray, Lord, that they would see, they would hear, and they would know the unpredictable. If you want to give God that next step of control, would you please take a step forward now? So, Father, I pray in Jesus' name that they would hear your voice today. And it would be a case of whatever the Spirit says, do it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. This is the end of this message. We hope you enjoyed it. If you want to find out more about our church, please visit www.chowdean.org.uk and please take a minute to rate our podcast on iTunes.